Good morning folks. I'm going to talk about fifth bearings a little bit today for the Corvair engine. And what I'm doing is I'm going to cast my own fifth bearing out. We'll see if this is an experiment in futility or if I kind of think I know what I'm doing. Anyway, the uh, concept of fifth bearing is obviously not new. William Wins developed it. Dan Weisman's turned out his fifth bearing. It's the, probably the most common one. There's one out by Roy's Garage. Um, and everybody's using a little bit different size bearing um, and I'll decide on which one I'm using as I go on. I've got quite a bit of paperwork on the fifth bearings that I've acquired over the years so I've researched this. And what we're doing is we're changing the standard front cover to accept a basically another main bearing and what we're doing is just taking that cover and mine's going to be a casting. This is a standard cover that's been cut down before. Of course this is a bell housing off of a off of the Corvair itself that goes to the transmission we cut off all the all the extra ones. This one had actually been cut down before I bought this my cores that I've got. I bought three cores they were already already disassembled. I've got two good usable cores and um, one of these housings had already been cut down. So anyway I'm not going to utilize it on the engine itself on the flight engine but I am going to use it for part of my pattern making. I guess what we're trying to do is we're shifting the load from the crankshaft itself out to the end of the crankshaft so the the propeller is not um, inducing undue stress on that on that crankshaft which is what's caused the breakages this, uh, and I'm obviously not an engineer but this is not a real complex subject I don't think um, common sense tells me that we're changing the oscillations on the crankshaft we're changing the harmonics there's there's going to be somebody that's got a, a real good explanation of, of that you know a lot more knowledgeable than I am but anyway, we're changing that and we're reducing the loads on the crankshaft itself and, and shifting it on out to the end of the, our extension on the crankshaft, basically. So what we're doing is we're changing the stresses on the, on the crankshaft itself. We're not going to eliminate those, those stresses. We're just going to reduce them and transfer them to a different area. This is going to be a casting, and we'll cast it out of aluminum and then heat treat it. So what I'm going to do is just make a pattern of it. It's really a pretty simple pattern, as patterns go. Let me change the camera around so we've got a little better view of what's going on here. And this is the block that we've used to, to set up everything, basically. It's, it's the third block that I have. It's not suitable for a flight engine, but it will work for, for setting up things like the um, patterns for the fifth bearing and... Uh, Oh, top covers, oil pans, that type of thing. I can use this as a, as a fixture, as a jig. This is the way the front cover set on. On the outside, what we'll do is we'll extend the top up to accept whatever bearing we're going to use. And I'm just starting to develop this. I'm going to basically make up the pattern for the bottom part that's going to attach to the, to the block itself, and we'll go from there. The alignment pins I pushed back out of the way, so it, it's not aligning there. It just flows freely. That'll make it easier for me to, to uh, transfer a pattern off of the back side of it. The only things that are really critical on the outside of this, as long as we've got enough material to support everything we do, is uh, how tall these bosses are, where it bolts on. Those are the only real critical factors on the out outer edges. The bottom of the of the cover uh, is integral with the oil pan, so it has to be a good machine surface that matches up. But otherwise, the outside's kind of in the wind. We can do whatever we want with it. Um, this will obviously be taller, like I say, to accept whatever bearing and seal we decide to install on there. These bosses will be machined flat. That's the only real criteria so that they bolt flat and true. And then we'll reset alignment pins when we, when we get that far after the casting is done and figure out. So we'll have a, a boss probably in the same locations that they're at now to align them. On the back side, get some of this other stuff out of the way here. On the back side of the bearing, the only thing that is important is the these outer diameters in here. Of course, we want it to match the outer contour where it bolts on. But um, the only things that are critical as far as inner contours is we have to match these inner contours so that they match up and seal on the on the block itself. We have to have the height both here and here so that we have clearance for the. Uh, for the timing gears. So those are the only things that are really important there. Um, this is just under a half an inch thick on this back surface or on this timing gear surface here. 
and uh, this one is just about an inch from the from the bottom up. So we'll adjust those accordingly to the bearing that we put in there. So basically, to make a pattern, all I'm going to do is do a transfer onto a sheet of paper so that uh, and outline the pattern, and then we can we can cut our first layer of um, patterns for this, and we're just going to lightly glue it in place so it holds position. We don't want a permanent bond there. Okay, so there's the bottom pattern. Let's see if we can get it up here where you can see a little bit. There will be the block side of the base piece for the uh, for the fifth bearing. And what I'll probably do is take, uh, we'll probably start off with a piece of half inch wood. And I'm not going to do a proper pattern for this. A proper pattern will be solid wood sectioned out and spliced together to get uh, maximum strength like you so you would basically have a, a pie shaped if you were doing a round pattern you have a pie shape with um, all your grain oriented so that it was fairly stable is what we're going to do this will probably just be a plywood pattern a hardwood pat or a hardboard pattern something like that whatever is necessary to get it because this is not going to be a production piece we only need to make you know probably three or four castings of this will will probably mess up one or two machining them and, and that type of thing so I'll probably cast up three or four is all this pattern will ever do so it will be built up of a more modern wood and I say modern by plywood or hardwood because it will inherently be more stable than than older pattern making techniques where you would have sectioned pieces together but anyway this gives us and it'll probably be about a half inch thick because that will accommodate the first let's see if we can peel this off that will accommodate very closely the first step or depth for that piece. So if we put a piece of half inch wood to start with, why we've established this depth here on for our timing gear clearances on the pattern itself. We're just going to take a piece of wood, adhere that to it, and we can cut that out on the scroll saw or the band saw, and that'll be our first part of the pattern. Well, here we've established the first layer of our pattern. It's just rough cut. I cut it out on the scroll saw. It'll all have to be smoothed out, and there'll have to be draft added to it, so it'll release from the sand. But basically, this is what we've got. We're a little bit oversized here, so we've got room to sand it and add your draft. Um, this has a little step coming out to um, help seal it against the oil pan, so I've left extra material there. And we'll align all this. This is just a piece of half inch plywood, fairly nice plywood, but it's just a piece of half inch plywood nonetheless. And half inch thick actually is the thickness of our bosses here. So we've already established that plane there, although we'll add just a little bit to those on the outside of the pattern, on this side of the pattern. That way we can machine those down flat. We can surface those down flat when we drill and, and counter bore them. So anyway, that's the first step in this. All we're trying to do with this fifth bearing is shift the load from the journal on the crankshaft that's prone to cracking or prone to breakage and um, we're transferring that on out through this fifth bearing to add more support there 
Um, people that are more knowledgeable than me will be able to explain it better and they're more than happy to do that in the comment section below. But we're changing either the the load on it, the harmonics, the oscillations, whatever you want to call them. That's basically all we're doing. This is not a rocket science thing. Um, fifth bearings now, they've um, a lot of the people that are building them have gone to CNCing them out. I actually prefer the casting for this application just because I think it fits more in line with the with the nostalgia of the engine and um, the rest of the castings that go with it. So hopefully this will work out to be a real successful project. We'll um, leave this part of it here for right now because it's colder than snot out here in the shop. So I'm going to go horse warm, warm up a little bit, and um, then we'll go from there. So anyway, if you find this interesting, why well, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like them. And if you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out the next in the series of these videos. So thanks for taking the time to watch.